worthy God. Come on, tell him how worthy he is. Tell him how magnificent he is. Come on, just begin to create an atmosphere for you to receive the word from God today. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just tell him he's wonderful. Tell him he's a provider. He's a way maker. He's a light in the darkness. He's a way out of no way. He's a very present help in the time of need. And if there's ever a time that we need him, we need him now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we can't make it without the Lord. We can't make it without Jesus. We can't make it without the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Come on and just bless the Lord. Open up your mouths and bless the Lord. Come on, the people of God will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, be in your mouth. Hallelujah. Right where you are, if you can't think of anything to thank him for this morning, just take a deep breath. And if you have breath in your body, that's enough to shout hallelujah, God. Thank you for waking me up this morning. See, sometimes we have to get into to not forget about the simple things that we need to thank God for. That we're able to lift up our hands, God. I thank you for these hands that are able to be lifted and raised to you. And because of that, I refuse not to lift them in your according to your glory. To give you glory. To give you thanks. And to give you praise, God. Hallelujah. Come on, I know there's someone out there this morning that you're grateful. And you're thankful. Because you know it was God on your side. Who was keeping you. Who's continuing to restore you. Who's continuing to renew you. Who's continuing to keep your mind sound. Hallelujah. We thank him this morning. Come on. We're coming this morning with a grateful heart, with an attitude of thankfulness and gratefulness. We can't forget about, although we're carriers of the kingdom, although the kingdom lives on the inside of us, although that we're bold and we're confident in who he is, although that we confess who he is, although that we know and we stand boldly and confident on his word, we can't forget about that he wants our worship. He desires our worship. He, he's created us to worship him, to commune with him, to have relationship with him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. It's the worship of God that's creating a dwelling place for him to reign in your life. Hallelujah. We thank him. Hallelujah. We have to get self out of the way so that God can flow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If God is not the way, then we're in the way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, God, we decrease so that God can increase in this place, in your homes, in your heart, in your family, in your relationships. Hallelujah. On your job. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Come on, shout. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Come on right where you are. He's worthy. Just look around your home right now. Look around your home and tell God, look at there and say, he's worthy. Look over there and say, God, you're worthy. Look at your electric is still on and say, God, you are worthy. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you right now for the gathering of the champions. Yes, God. 
Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that as we as kingdom citizens gather together in unity and love, that you are here. Your very presence is here right now this morning, Father. And as your presence is here, so is it, in, Lord, in the homes and the different places where all of the listeners are today, Father. All those who are in our service on today, Father. And I thank you that your presence is being sensed and felt, Father. Thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, right now that your spirit is upon your people. This is what we 
we do know. And this is what we've told you and we will continue to tell you. That we are sons of God. Yes, amen. Amen. Come on, Pastor. And as sons of God, you know and I know sons and daughters. Sons is not a gender, but it is a position in, in the family of God. And as sons of God, we work with our Father. And as we work with our Father, the Holy Spirit works with us and through us. Yes, yes, yes. And that's how the power of God is able to flow through us and manifest heaven on earth. So you hear, hear people say that all that naming and claiming and grabbing and blabbing, you would think you're above God. No, that's not what we think. We just know our assignment. We just know our the authority that has been given to us. Are y'all listening to me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so because we have this the authority, yes, we can call things into existence that be not as though they were. And you need to know this. As we were in meditation, and the Lord began to speak, just as I shared with you about three weeks ago, that in meditation, God showed me the face of this pandemic, the coronavirus, and I told you that it wasn't over. The Lord said that it was not over. And if you look from three weeks ago until right now, you'll see how things have gotten catastrophic around our nation and around the world. Why am I speaking to you this way? Because you will have challenge you and say that oh if you don't wear a mask you're in fear if you're not back in your church you're in fear well the, the church is the main culprit of the spread of this disease because we've, we've we've thought that we are supposed to gather together we've taken the scripture and misinterpreted it when it said that in, in, in Hebrews 10 and 23 that we're not supposed to forsake the assembling of the brethren but the assembling of the brethren does not, it does not keep us just locked in a building gathering. As you can see, we're here, we're gathered together across the world. If you didn't know, this, this service goes across the world. It's not just in the United States. But we're gathered together. And because the anointing, the anointing is here, I believe that you sense the, the anointing and and the presence of God right where you are. And so you're going to encounter, this is what you're going to encounter. You're going to encounter people who are still stuck in the, in the ceremonial law of church. That have not transitioned, still fighting to control you and, and dominate you. To keep you in the bondage of tradition. To hold you hostage. And never get you to a place as an individual where you can stay. And declare your sonship. Yes, yes, yes. And live as a kingdom citizen individually in the earth. See, that's our assignment here at this church. To train and equip you to live as kingdom citizens on the earth. To train and equip you to go into the world and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Yes, yes, yes. But because the church have not understood kingdom, they don't teach kingdom. Because they have not understood and misinterpreted grace. They say grace messed everything up and grace has, has lied to people and said, oh, you can do this and you can do whatever. No, that's not what grace is. Because grace, the person of Jesus Christ has come and when you receive Jesus, hallelujah, and he comes and lives on the inside of you, that grace strips you of your unrighteousness. righteousness. That grace causes you to be transformed, to be renewed in your mind. You see, because they're stuck in the church in the ceremonial law, their mind haven't been renewed, so they're stuck in tradition, hallelujah. And because the world has considered, if I come and accept Jesus, hallelujah, and get saved, then I can go back out 
God the word to do it, I won't because of grace. That's a lie. Grace causes you to live as the righteousness of God in the earth. It causes you to live and, and, and live and operate and imitate Jesus Christ. I have to explain this because I told you we have haters. We have religious people. And if, let, me, let me say this. If you're in a church where all your preachers do is talk about other churches, then you need to leave because they're not teaching you how to live as a kingdom citizen on the earth. Yes. 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 If I got to take somebody else's message to bring them down to make myself look good, then I've made it about me and I have not made it yes. about Jesus and the kingdom. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, Pastor. Hallelujah. Teach us. Unfortunately, we don't have time nonsense but this is something that we have to deal with and we have to share with you so that you can stay focused stay consistent stay committed because you're going to hear all of these things coming but because you know who you are I believe we shared that with you we've taught you and we've embedded it to you that you are the righteousness of God you are sons of God your identity says it all hallelujah I don't have to try to control you, hallelujah. I don't want to control you. Because we want you to get results. Results that manifest heaven on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're teaching the whole truth. Yes, we're teaching the whole truth. Some people have only gotten some of the truth. Hallelujah. But you are receiving the whole truth. We're co-laboring with God. No more tradition. It's time for the people of God to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Being, like you said, being aware of vain philosophies and people that will try to push tradition and their ideas and their there are their ways of doing things instead of being led and governed by the kingdom culture and the kingdom mindset. Amen. Yes, yes. When we're talking about forsaking the assembly, when God is talking about forsaking the not forsaking the assembly, He's simply saying because we have people fighting against what God is doing right now, Fight the losing and they're God. more focused on a building than building. The kingdom. That's right. And in a part of building the kingdom is building the citizens yeah. that are a part of the kingdom. Yeah. Somebody shout, that's us. That's me. That's me. That's me. And so when God is, is, is bringing back his kingdom, his presence, that means that he has to get us ready. That means that we have to be prepared. And that's why we say, get ready for the mission. That's why we're teaching on enduring the mission. Uh, uh, the takeover is here. The takeover has begun. That's why we're training and equipping you and, and continuing to give you and feed you with knowledge and understanding and to build you up. Hallelujah. But how many of you know this morning, like he said, the church is not a building. It's about the presence of the God. Without the presence of God, all you would have is a building. God is destroying buildings full of people. He is building people and destroying buildings full of people without his presence. When we assemble together, that's us assembling with one mindset, yes. with one heart, yeah. with one goal. And that goal is Jesus. Yeah. God spoke to me and said that we're entering into a season of worship. And we're entering into a season of prayer. Hallelujah. Come on. We're entering into a season of worship. Yes. What does that mean? If you will look at the book of Acts, chapter 1 and chapter 2. In Acts 1, God was preparing them. They had specific instructions on what to do. Yeah. And in Acts chapter 1, God told them, to, I want you to assemble together and then what he said is on one mind in one place on one accord yeah. and he said I don't want you to leave come on somebody says stay there don't move right say right where you are don't move until the Holy Ghost
Ghost come. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, it continues, this is the day of Pentecost. They were on one accord. And it says it was about 9 o'clock and everybody thought they were crazy. They were, how in the world is so early and these people are drunk? They were so intoxicated, so submerged and immersed in the presence of God that people, the people thought they were drunk. That's where God is taking us. We're speaking his language. Yes, we are. He's pouring out his spirit. There be an increase of prophetic and others. Yeah. There be an increase of dreams and visions. We've already told you. And it's accelerating. Yes. And not only will those dreams and visions increase, but you'll have accurate interpretation of these dreams and visions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's been God's intent from the beginning of time to get his people back into his original intent for our lives. So worship. Somebody shout worship. Worship, worship is a part of the takeover. Yeah. Worship is a part of the kingdom mission. Yeah. God is restoring. Worship is not just a song. We know that we can enter in that way, but worship is simply creating a dwelling place for God to live. A dwelling place of God. A dwelling place for God to heal. A dwelling place for God to restore. A dwelling a dwelling place for God to renew, set free, and deliver. Hallelujah. How many of you have been set free? Well, who God has set free, they're free indeed. And when you're free indeed, you begin to worship him. When you lift your hands, that's a sign that you're free because you've created a dwelling place for him to reign. When you begin to open up your mouth and you shout hallelujah, that signifies that you're free because you've created a dwelling place for God's presence, his spirit, his anointing, being clothed in his majesty to dwell. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, tell the Lord. I've created this space. There's a place in you that only God can dwell. Come on, somebody shout. That's God's spot. That's Jesus' spot. That only God can dwell. Buddha can't dwell there. Riches can't cannot dwell there. That's God's spot. Come on, tell somebody that's God's spot. That's the place within me that only God can dwell. Come on, somebody shout worship. Worship, worship, worship. That's what the takeover is a part of. A part of the takeover is worship. Come on, we're taking ourselves out of the way. We're allowing God to infuse us, to energize us, to invigorate us, to renew us. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, I'm back. I'm back. I feel my strength coming back. Hallelujah. Come on, if I were you, I would just lift up my hands and I would open up my mouth and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship you, God. I've created a dwelling place for you. I know this might be new for some of you, and I know this might not be what you're used to, but this is where God is calling us to. Yeah. Creating a dwelling place, a continual place. When you talk about a dwelling place, and he talks about if you abide in me, and my little bird abide in you, you should have whatsoever you say. And so when we decree a thing, that's the way it's able to be established. Yeah. See, we're establishing the kingdom. Yeah. When we establish his kingdom, then we begin to expand his kingdom. Yeah. And when we expand his kingdom, he said he's expanding your capacity to receive. If you'll establish his kingdom, if you'll expand his kingdom, he has no choice but to expand your capacity to receive. That's what Matthew 6 and 33 is talking about. If you seek first his kingdom, establish his kingdom, expand his kingdom, then what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall wear. See, that's when we don't have to worry about what we put on, what we shall wear, because we're expanding and expanding his kingdom that's not our focus our focus is on God hallelujah come on somebody shout worship 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 he's calling us back to a place of worship we know we can praise and we can dance and we can do that all good but how many of you know when you worship God 
It's about a relationship. It's an intimate relationship. It's when you're in the back in the booth in the corner and nobody knows what you're going through and nobody knows the pain that you feel and you lift up your hands without thinking because you know there's no other help that can bring you out. You know there's no other help that can heal you and you lift up your hands and you shout, Lord, I thank you. Lord, if you don't do it, it can't be done. God, I thank you that you're healing me right now. I thank you that you're restoring my children. Worship. I worship you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. Clothe me in your glory, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Worship. Worship. Relationship. Worship. Worship is a part of the takeover. If you don't have a relationship with him, if you don't know for sure that God is for you, if you're not assured and fully persuaded, come on, we say these scriptures, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Hallelujah, for your rod and your staff, they come for me. You light up every pathway. If you don't know, right now, the things that we're dealing with and we're faced with in the darkness of the world, if you're not assured of that, hallelujah, then you won't be able to endure. Come on, you got to know and you got to be sure. All that is taken care of and all that is matured and developed in your relationship and in your worship. Hallelujah. Forgetting about yourself. Forgetting about yourself. Taking up your cross. When the Bible says, take up your cross and follow me. Forgetting about yourself. Forgetting about your needs. And focusing on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you are willing to take up that cross this morning? Take up your cross. Forget about it. Forget about the nonsense. Hallelujah. And forget about it all. Hallelujah. And worship the Lord. Yeah. Worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know He's what, calling us back to worship. You know Hallelujah. what's so beautiful about worship? Thank you, Jesus. And people don't really discuss this. Thank you, Lord. But worship you, is a giving of one's self. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For those of you who like to who, who like to, to dig in and, and, and study this, in the Old Testament, the ceremonial law. Worship consisted of the believers bringing their offering to the high priest. The sacrificial lamb, the, the, the tithe, the 10% was the, was the what? It was an offering, right? Whether it was cattle, whether it was grain, it was an offering. And so we know that Jesus is our high priest. And so the first act of worship is us giving of ourselves. They don't want to talk about that. Where you make a sacrifice to create a space that only Jesus can abide in. Hallelujah. It is a giving of self when you lift your hands to him and just worship him without asking for anything. It's a giving of yourself. It is a sacrificing of yourself. But you have to ask yourself this question. Am I willing to be a sacrifice? Jesus was a sacrifice. He was the first fruit. He was, he was sacrificed for you and I. And so where we are. continue to, to go through the, the shift, hallelujah, and, and, and everything has shifted, and now we're in a, a position to take over, hallelujah. You have to understand that before you can go into battle, you need to have some worship. You need to be worship. Become worship. And give God praise. And as you become worship, that sacrificial worship, 
to our Father, hallelujah, He consumes you. Why is this important, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Because we are the church. As individuals, we carry the kingdom, we carry the presence of God. So when you go into the world, we have to be equipped to establish kingdom wherever we go. And as we establish the kingdom and, and we begin to expand the kingdom, it goes out from us. And that's why you need God, you need to create space or capacity so God can continue to fill you. Because we're taking over. The kingdom has to be expanded across the whole earth. So the gospel. The gospel of the kingdom has to be preached. But you have to be equipped and prepared to do it. That's why you need finances. That's why you need to be able to function and operate in the power of God when people need healing. You become the sign and you become the wonder, hallelujah, that, that causes people to experience, hallelujah, you working the works of God, creating the miracle for those who are unbelievers and those who, who, are, who, are, who have not come to a place of faith where they can do it for themselves. But if I, if I keep you in bondage, if I keep you in church, if I keep you in the ceremonial law, if I come to you talking about what everybody preaching and, and trying to convince you that what they're preaching is wrong, I'm not helping you. keeping you in bondage so you can come back to me. But here's the good thing about you joining in our service and joining a, 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 a this church, hallelujah. Every seed, financial seed that's sown into this ministry goes back out to the working of the ministry. We don't depend on your offering for our paycheck because God has abundantly supplied us where we don't have to take a paycheck from this place. He's equipped us with gifts and abilities, hallelujah, to provide services that, hallelujah, causes, hallelujah, provision to be reciprocated back to us. Yeah, I'm talking about some people who need you to be in church so that they can get your offering, to ensure that they get your offering so they can pay their bills. I'm just being real. But when I read in the scriptures, I saw Paul he was a tent maker outside of preaching the gospel. Now, I'm not coming down on anybody because, hallelujah, the, does the man of God that, 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 that passes the church in those days, do they deserve, hallelujah, an offering? Do they deserve to be paid? Yes. We just have a different, we just have a different uh, function going on here. But I will, we will not make, hallelujah, you or anybody our source because God is our source. And when you worship, you worship, you sow your financial seed, your offering because you love God and you have a relationship with God. But we have transitioned into worship in this season of worship and prayer going to continue this kingdom operation to equip you to take over to build you to strengthen you and I must tell you this there has already been another shift to take place we've shifted again spiritual and if you're with us you gotta see spiritual that we've shifted again and as my wife was just sharing with you when the believers were gathered together in unity in one place with one mindset praying based on the instructions that were left for them when the Holy Spirit came upon them that 
was a shift taking place. And that shift that took place, hallelujah, was an introduction and a release of the power of God for the kingdom of heaven to come to earth. That's why John and Peter was able to say to the man at the gate called Beautiful, silver and gold have I none, but what such I have that I give unto you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And we saw the result, the manifestation of kingdom. That's why when, G, when, when Peter preached his first sermon, hallelujah, everyone was captivated and drawn because they knew, hallelujah, it was not possible for all these people to be speaking in, the, in, a, in a, an unknown tongue in a language that they had not learned. And all the people that were gathered around, although they said they were drunk, they understood what they were saying in their own language. And so because we've shifted again, you better get with me, hallelujah. We've shifted into a place, hallelujah, where you have been equipped to take over. Are y'all listening to me? And so with the kingdom operation and the shift, you have to understand this. The kingdom rule of God governs the operation of the believer and the anointing that the believer has on their life. I'm talking about you. And that anointing will cause you, hallelujah, to function, hallelujah, as a kingdom citizen in the earth. So when you, you go to work in the world system, although you're in the world system, you apply kingdom principles and those kingdom principles causes you and, and causes everyone around you to experience, hallelujah, results of the kingdom, hallelujah, it causes you to experience the, the glory of God with the inventions, creative ideas. This is where this comes from. The kingdom, hallelujah, you got to believe, hallelujah, that God's kingdom, his presence, that's what kingdom is, the presence of God ruling in your heart, hallelujah, the presence of God, the kingdom is within you, and it comes, hallelujah, and it through the Holy Spirit through you for the purpose of establishing heaven on earth and expanding heaven on earth hallelujah to glorify God you see most people don't know that the Holy Spirit came to glorify Jesus that's what he came for yes he came. He was he's here to guide us he's here right now to guide us into all truth to teach us all things and whatever he hears from heaven that shall he speak and so because we are in tune with the holy spirit we're in sync with the holy spirit this is that that you're hearing today is coming from the mouthpiece of god that's how it works we rely on the holy spirit yes i'm a son of god but just like jesus relied on the holy spirit so must i so when jesus whatever jesus did he relied on the holy spirit to give him the answer when they needed to pay taxes, the Holy Spirit said, hey, tell Peter to go go, go, go fishing. And so he told Peter, go fishing, and the first fi fish you catch, there are going to be some coins, enough to pay taxes for you and me. And when you, get, when you catch the fish, take the coins out of his mouth and go pay your taxes. Some of you are in situations and circumstances right now where you've tried to do it based on your past experience, hallelujah. But you have to recognize in this shift, when you since you've been coming to this church, hallelujah, you have a greater source than yourself. You have a greater source than your past experience. You have the source of heaven living on the inside of you. That's the Holy Spirit. And because you have him living on the inside of you, you must understand that he is the source to the answer that you need, hallelujah, to resolve your issue or, the, or to bring you out of the circumstances that you're in. Come on. Ain't nobody told you that you was a son of God until you came here. They still telling you you were a sinner saved by grace. The devil is alive. When you accepted Jesus, that title of sinner went away from you and you are a son of God. You are a kingdom citizen, a born again believer and the righteousness of God. That's your identity. You better catch on to this. Because the principles of the kingdom is what's going to cause the anointing, hallelujah, to come upon you 
and function through you to get results. I'm preaching already. There's no way. What we want you to know is this.
any longer, God shifted them. Amen. And so God is saying, when you have to have a relationship, you have to stay in worship, you have to stay in a place that you can hear. Speak, Lord, because I hear you. I'm ready to listen, God. Hallelujah. You've got to be ready to move. You've got to be able to shift. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Stop. 
accomplish heaven on earth in your life, hallelujah, and to go out and, 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 and be equipped, hallelujah, in the marketplace to find those who have been assigned to you, hallelujah, so that you, hallelujah, can expand the kingdom, hallelujah. Come on, say, inward shift, God is shifting me. So some of you are beginning to function, hallelujah, in gifts that you've never functioned in. Some of you have been preaching, hallelujah, and at a level that you haven't preached at, hallelujah. Some of your, your, your thought processes and your mind has been renewed, hallelujah, to hear from God and to function and operate as God. And, and I know this to be true because we get testimony after testimony after testimony in, hallelujah, of how God is functioning and operating in your life, hallelujah, and he's blessing you and he's keeping you. Now, we did not, we told you in the beginning, we didn't forget about those who have gone through loss, who have gone, who are going through struggle, who've lost businesses, hallelujah, and, 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 and all those things, hallelujah. You still have to recognize and remember, hallelujah, that you are in a world system, hallelujah. And because you're in a world system, you live in the world, you, you live in this physical body, in this physical realm, life happens. But when life happens, how are you going to respond? If, 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 if I, hallelujah, as a pastor, a, a, a prophet, hallelujah, and, and if I hadn't taken my responsibility serious and trained and equipped you, hallelujah, only thing, the only thing that I'll be able to tell you is, hold on, everything going to be all right. The devil is a lie, hallelujah. God has given us instructions for you to live by and so, so that you can function and experience, hallelujah, provision coming in that you did not expect to come in. Promotion coming where you wasn't looking for promotion, but it came anyway, hallelujah. Job opportunities, some of you have business contracts, hallelujah, that have been coming to you. Why? Because you aligned yourself with God and the kingdom. You heard the word. You renewed your mind, hallelujah. And that's because you renewed your mind, hallelujah, you've opened yourself up for the spirit of God to work through you to manifest his glory. But understand this, that was a shift in your personal life. And understand this, that the shift in your personal life was to build you and glorify God. of this and you can go look it up for yourself I, I'm going to go here real quick 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and in 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32 it says this and of Issachar men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do 200 chiefs and all their kids, kinsmen were under their command. So the sons of Issachar, Issachar was Isaac's fifth son. These men understood the time. They understood the seasons. And because they were connected to God and they understood the times and the seasons, they knew how to instruct and govern Israel on what and how they should function, what they should do in public affairs, in battle, in weather. Even when it came to seed time and harvest, they had this knowledge and understanding. They had wisdom, but it was based off of relationship. It was based on what, off of what they believed. Are y'all listening to me? And so where God has Pastor Laquita and I, we can't speak for everybody else. But in the position that we're in, we understand the times that we're in because of our relationship with the Spirit of God, because of our understanding that the kingdom is on the inside of us, so we're able to teach you and preach to you and guide you to share with you where we are. 
So this is why in the beginning of this, before the pandemic even got to this level, we were able to share with you, and, 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 and you, you church members know, last year we were talking about the shift that was taking place, hallelujah. And God was telling us to, 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 to tell you to prepare. Get your money right, get out of debt, keep out of debt, prepare, hallelujah, mentally, physically, financially, and emotionally, because the, the whole world is about to shift. And we shared that with you in the beginning. You can go back and you can look at it. And we shared with our members here, hallelujah, that there was the, the awakening was taking place. People would become more conscious of God because they need God. We walked away from him, but now we need him. So we're crying out to him. And, we're, and, 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 and believers and people are looking for churches like this that will teach the truth, preach the truth, the present truth. I'm not talking about the past, the present truth, so that you can, you can get yourself together and shift, hallelujah, and move with God, hallelujah. And as you move with God, as the dividing asunder has taken place, hallelujah, you find yourself in kingdom and not in religion. And you find yourself, hallelujah, in a place, hallelujah, where hallelujah because you shifted with God now the inward shift is taking place in your life and you're experiencing provision coming in you're experiencing pro protection coming in when when I share with you hallelujah that it wasn't over and then God has shielded you hallelujah he, he, he covered you hallelujah I had to share that with you because God was revealing to me that people were talking about you in fear if you won't come out you in fear if you wear a mask you in fear if you ain't if you if you if you're afraid to come back Church, the devil is a lie, hallelujah. What do you think the, the children of Israel were thinking when they smeared the blood over the door? They believed the instructions of the prophet Moses, hallelujah, and they followed the instructions, and because they followed the instructions, what happened? They experienced abundance and overflow, and hallelujah, they experienced divine protection, and so we share that with you, hallelujah, and because we share that with you, you have to maintain what you've obtained, hallelujah, and no, I'm here to tell you that you are not in fear because you wear a mask, hallelujah. You are following the instructions of the leaders, the elected officials that are appointed above you, hallelujah. And you got to recognize this, hallelujah. If you're a kingdom citizen, recognize this. It ain't just about you. It's about everybody else. When you take care of the kingdom, God will take care of you. We share with you this ain't for the weak. And see, God shared this with us before we ever started this. You have to be willing to be in uncomfortable positions, hallelujah, to tell the truth. And so my wife and I have embraced this uncomfortable position where sometimes we have to stand alone, but we're telling the truth, and this is what you need to know, hallelujah. Everything that God shared with us and we share with you has happened up until this point. The governmental systems, hallelujah, are changing their thought processes because what? When they made a decision that was outside of the will of God, if you were in prayer with us last week, hallelujah, before the service, what did we say? God, because you can turn the hearts of kings and you've given us his authority. In Jesus' name, we turn the hearts of the kings and leaders of this country, hallelujah, to conform to your will so that you might be glorified, hallelujah. This is what we're talking about. In your own jurisdictions, hallelujah. You, you, you gotta be ready this. You are a part of the, the inward shift, hallelujah. And, and an inward shift is you learning and growing and, and, and getting stronger and bold enough to stand up and sometimes stand alone. Sometimes you gotta stand alone because guess what? When the children of Israel came out of the out of out, out, out of Egypt, when they crossed and parted through the Red Sea, most people don't talk about this, but I'm gonna talk about it. Go read your Bible. It said there was a mixed group that came about them and came with them, hallelujah. They were not, hallelujah, the Hebrews, hallelujah, but they came with them and they fell into lust, which hallelujah caused the, the Hebrews, the children of God, hallelujah, to to get into lust with them. So sometimes the inward ship will cause you to cut some people off. You got to let them go, hallelujah, because if not, they will be the influence that causes you to step outside of the will of God and suffer the consequences, hallelujah. 
message and I know you weren't ready for it. But I got to share with you what the Holy Spirit has given to us. Somebody say, I'm shifting, I'm shifting, I'm shifting. And this is what God did. When the 12 spies came back and 10 of the 12 considered themselves grasshoppers, those people that did not believe God and they accepted the evil report, they died in the wilderness. They died in the wilderness and their children, Joshua had to lead their children into the promised land. And so this is what God did for them. He caused them to cross over the Jordan into Gilgal. And in that place, it was a place of protection. It was a place of preparation. And this is what he did. He told Joshua to go circumcise the men. Why? Because he was renewing his covenant. Y'all better get this. He was renewing his covenant. And so I'm doing a comparison and an analogy for you. When God shared with us to share with you to stay at home, to protect yourself, hallelujah, it's because he's preparing you. He's protecting you. And he's renewed his covenant, hallelujah. He, he's causing the grace that has been made available for you to put you in a position to step into the kingdom lifestyle and leave the, the, the ceremonial church religious lifestyle so that you can experience manifestation after manifestation after manifestation in your life. Come on now, this is an inward shift taking place. And this is what he did. When they crossed over the Jordan, he parted the Jordan open. When they got over there to Gilgal, he closed it back up. Why? Because he wasn't going to allow them to go back. What am I saying to you? Don't allow yourself to go back to the nonsense, to the mess, to the religion that has kept you in bondage, to the haters and the unbelievers and the crooked. You got to shift on the inside. Shift with your mindset, hallelujah, so that you can establish kingdom, hallelujah, and expand your capacity to receive because the more you give out, the more it has to come in. We've shifted again. And what happened when you go to Joshua chapter 6? Joshua ran into the, the captain of the host of Jehovah, right? And what did he do? He gave them instructions on how Jericho was going to fall. God has given you divine instructions on how you're going to take over and manifest the kingdom. Are y'all listening to me? He gave Joshua instructions and Joshua followed those instructions to the T. And he told those people, when y'all march around this building, don't make a sound. When the haters come to you and the religious folk come to you, with the vain philosophy come to you, don't say a word. Because you know who you are. And this is why you can do this. Because you've been with us in this service. And you've been renewed in the spirit of your mind. When your mind is renewed, transformation takes place. A change. Now you are mature. Now you experience growth. Now you've experienced progress. That's what transformation is. What does transformation do, Pastor? Transformation equips you and prepares you to transition. Somebody say shift. Transition takes you from one place to another, from one phase to another. Transition brings you to a place of elevation. So now you are not functioning from the carnal mindset. 
or the natural state, but you're functioning and operating from the supernatural state of sonship, elevation. What gives you the authority to do this? My father has given me the authority. He never said you had to be an apostle, a prophet, a preacher, a teacher. Why? Because you as the individual have been equipped to do the work. Some of you, yes, you're called into the prophetic. Some of you have been called into teaching and pastorship. You, we have different callings. But you have to know that somebody's depending on you. And so this inward shift that has taken place in your life says to you that God has conditioned me for this. God has conditioned me to take over. God has not only conditioned me to take over, but he's conditioned me, hallelujah, to establish kingdom in my jurisdiction and expand it. The world is waiting on you. And this is how you're going to expand it. Someone that assigned to you comes to you, and you you because you got food, hallelujah, you got you got fed this word, and now you have you you've grown up, you've matured. Because this is what happened. When you when, when you when you're being renewed and you transform, you go from the classroom phase to the on-the-job training phase, where well, on the job training, now you're out doing the work. And from on-the-job training, you move into what we call being the subject matter expert, hallelujah. You can stand alone. God is shifting you and he's getting you out, hallelujah. No, we did not forsake the assembling of the brethren, hallelujah. We did not forsake the assembling of the brother because we didn't go to a building, hallelujah. We still have the same mindset. We are still on one accord. We have the same prayer, the same purpose, the same, hallelujah, drive and passion and fire to do the will of God, hallelujah. And so now I'm covering my jurisdiction. I feed you, hallelujah. Now you go and you feed your jurisdiction, hallelujah. And that's the kingdom expanding, hallelujah. And then you get them straight, hallelujah. You train and equip them. Now they take what they've got, they've learned, hallelujah. And the, the gospel, hallelujah, of the kingdom is preached, hallelujah, from their jurisdiction. And we continue to expand and expand and expand. And the next thing you know, heaven has covered earth. you back. This church ain't designed to hold you back. This church is designed and equipped to send you out to do the work of the kingdom. Many people try to label this church, oh, that's a deliverance church. Oh, this is that church. No, this is a kingdom church, which means that we have the capacity to do it all. Whether it's healing, deliverance, restoration, prosperity, whatever it is, God has equipped us to equip you, hallelujah, to do the work, hallelujah. This is why if we have to understand this. God told us, hallelujah, not to get caught up in a title or a position because I need you to be ready and available to be whatever I need you to be when the time comes. And so when, when it was time for me to operate and function in the apostolic, hallelujah, anoint, and the anointing and call, I was ready to do the work and willing. Why? Because I'm not afraid to be uncomfortable to tell the truth. And yes, signs and wonders follow. But where God has us at in the shift, you are the sign. And you are the work, the wonder that the world is waiting on. Turn to your neighbor wherever you are and say, the world is waiting on you. I don't care how young you are or how, how old you are. The world is waiting on you. There's someone assigned to you. Say, I'm equipped for this. And the inner shift has taken place in you. And some of you have felt that you felt different. You felt better. You felt you feel a boldness. And some, some of you, you, you're trying to figure out what's going on with yourself. And, and, and some of you have actually been in fear of the call that's on your life. Hallelujah. But God is saying, 
don't, hallelujah, reject the call. I have called you, not a man, hallelujah. God is saying right now, you need to stand up and take your rightful place and begin to operate into which I've called you, hallelujah. But because you haven't had anyone to tell you the truth and, 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 and to tell you, hallelujah, that it's time for you to grow up and move from the carnal to the spiritual, hallelujah, you've shaken your calling and you've walked away from your calling. And I'm telling you now, get up and come back and get, get ready to do the work. This is what else. This is this is something else that God shared with me because I was I was praying and I was meditating and I was asking God why is it so hard for leaders to see the importance of following the instructions that were laid out. This is what God said to me. He said, son, you did what I told you. He said, but for those who don't follow the instructions of the Lord, they'll deal with those consequences. And I said, yes, Lord. Because each of us have different responsibilities as pastors, apostles, prophets, preachers, teachers. We have our instructions and we have to follow the instructions that the Lord give us so if God told you to go and function and, 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 and gather together and come back to church and lay hands on the sick and, 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 and do all those things hallelujah and, 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 and all those things that, that that's taking place you go ahead and you do those things but if it, God didn't tell you to do it the consequences are coming and as I stand for you, as I stand before you right now, as a son of God and the authority of God, the words that I've spoken to you, you're going to see them. You're going to see them manifest. You're going to know who the sons of Issachar are, the sons of God are, who understand the times and the seasons, who've heard from God, who've shifted inwardly. And now have a relationship with God and mature to hear God. You're going to see. You're going to see the true remnant standing up. I'm not call, I'm not telling nobody to be in fear. I'm not saying this for anybody to be in fear. I'm not trying to control anybody. I'm just saying what the Lord has shared with me. Because just as he said it's not over and things have gotten worse you better believe that when he said it it was true but let's focus on this inward shift this inward shift for those of you who are, who are in tune that is taking place is going to cause an acceleration to take place in your life so there are going to be events that, that's taking place in your life and you got to be prayerful and you got to be ready that you're going to be called upon to represent the kingdom. And when all of this stuff is over, yeah, I'm talking about when, when the pandemic is over and, and uh, all of the things that are going on with uh, equality, you're going to be at the forefront spearheading what God is doing in this move. Because we're moving. We're moving forward as a spearhead and as a remnant Hallelujah, to establish and expand the kingdom on the earth. Some of you are going to be put in, in positions where even this week where you're going to be called on to pray for someone. And your prayer, intentional prayer, will be in the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, I cancel. Cancer, heart disease, I cancel coronavirus, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. And by the authority in the name of Jesus, be healed. And you'll get the results. Inward shift. The inward shift is for you. It's, the inward shift is actually a promotion for you. For you to walk in what God has called you, called you to be. And do the work that he's called you to do.
So you ain't got time for anxiety, stress, low self-esteem. You ain't got time to deal with your past because it's over. You ain't got time to deal with haters that try to keep you down. You ain't got time to go back to the religious state of being, that natural state, because you're supernatural. You have the presence of God living on the inside of you, and as you yield to him, his presence and his anointing will come upon you, and, and he will flow through you to manifest his glory in the earth. That's where we are. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Your worship is detrimental. Your worship and your prayer life is detrimental to you moving forward in God because your worship is you giving yourself, making yourself to sacrifice. And as you sacrifice yourself, your relationship with God is strengthened and matured. And then you hear the voice of God and you act on what you hear. And you'll see God flowing through you. You'll see God working through you. So in this season of worship, it is for you. Yes, you're shifted. Yes, you're being promoted. But there's still work to do. It don't stop. There's still growth to take place. How, are you listening to me? Because we got to spread this all over the world. And we love you. And we appreciate you more than you know. And we pray for you. you listen, you got to understand this. Life happens. We have to pray. And we're praying for you on a daily basis. We, we have to pray for our own families. We, we have... We have children. Our daughters work in the hospital. Our one of our daughters work in a correctional facility. Are y'all listening to me? We've lost family members on, and, and our family to the coronavirus. But when life happens, you have to be able to respond. And so, just as you're tuned in, hallelujah, and joining to the service, we're praying for you so that as, as we pray for you, you can hear from God and, and, and you, you can pray too. And we're shift. And as we pray together on one accord, assemble together as the body, hallelujah, God can move through us, hallelujah, as one powerful force to manifest his glory in the earth. So just as it pertains to you, it pertains to us. So I'm going to say I'm shift, I've shifted inwardly. Come on, say I shifted. I've shifted. You've grown up. No longer when you play the reindeer games. When I was a child, I thought as a child. I acted like a child. I responded as a child. But when I became a man, I put childish things away. When I was a child, I thought religious. I was religious. I was stuck in the ceremony. But now I'm a man. I'm a son of God. The whole earth has been waiting on me. I put away the religious tradition and I've stepped into the kingdom and as a son of God and a kingdom citizen I have to function as an ambassador and a son operating on the authority of my father because we're taking over give God praise the takeover is in full effect and you are part of the takeover. And you have a responsibility to fulfill in this phase of this. And don't worry about self because God is going to take care of you. He's taking care of you right now. And continue to pray for those who've lost businesses and jobs. That, that's not coming back. Pray for those who are dealing with a, 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 a loss of homes and those things. We still have to pray for them. We are not supreme above God, but we operate with God. He's the king of kings, so he's made us kings. Jesus is the firstborn son, and we are sons. Are y'all listening to me? This is real. Turn to your neighbor and say, somebody's depending on me. I got to do the work. Hallelujah.
Now, I went through some scriptures. I went to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 32. I went to Joshua 5 when he talked about circumcision. I went to Joshua 6 when Joshua uh, uh, spoke to the Lord and the Lord gave him instructions. I shared with you how he shifted them, he protected them, he con conditioned them and prepared them. Hallelujah. And I, I, I shared with you how they went and took over. My wife shared with you the prophetic word of the season that we're in, the season of worship and prayer. We've shared this with you, and, 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 and you have to hold on to it. You have to maintain what you obtained this morning. Now, if you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life, this is an opportunity for you to make him Lord of your life. This is the opportunity for you to become a son of God. I present this opportunity to you. This is the greatest opportunity that you have. And the, the, the greatest thing about it is you don't have to be embarrassed wherever you are. If, if you're in your home, you're in the bathroom, you're at the kitchen table, on the porch, wherever you are, you can accept Jesus right now. And no, life does not get boring when you get saved. It gets better. Amen? You still can have fun. You still can go to the movies. You, me and my wife, we still go to the beach. Unfortunately, we can't go now, but most of our time is spent at, at a beach. Enjoying each other's company. Loving on each other. You still can go do things. The kingdom is not designed to keep you in bondage, but it's, it is designed for you to go out as an individual and do the work. It is designed for you to go out and live your best life and enjoy life, have and enjoy life and experience abundance. It is not designed for you to live in poverty or lack or hurt or abuse. So if that's you, this is the opportunity. God is calling you to join this church this is an opportunity for you to join this church if life happened and you walked away from the church and you want to come back this is a, a great opportunity I just want you to pray this prayer with me Father we thank you for the gathering of the champions and we thank you for those that have come to make you Lord of their lives Father and just by their confession just by their stand just by their of accepting the words that I've spoken, Father, they've confessed with their mouth and they believe in their heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. Therefore, I call them saved. And there are those who walked away because life happened. They felt like they weren't getting fed. They felt like nothing was happening for them. But now they've come into the knowledge of kingdom. Hallelujah. They've decided to come back to you. And your word declares that if they're faithful and just to repent of their sins, you are faithful and just enough. Hallelujah. To forgive them and to restore them unto righteousness. I call them the righteousness of God. I call them back into the family of God. We welcome them back in, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you. And for those who decided to join this church, the Kingdom of Heaven Church International, we thank you for them, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Pastor Queen and I accept the responsibility of praying for them, training them, equipping them, giving them instruction and guidance, Father, and direction, correction, and reproof, and knowledge and understanding so that they can live as kingdom citizens on the earth. We thank you for them. We accept that responsibility. And we bless you and we pray the blessing upon them. We release it. And in Jesus' name, the blessing that is on Jesus Christ, I now release to be upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. The benefits package is yours. All your sins have been forgiven. All things have passed away. All things have become new. You are a new creation in the sight of God. Hallelujah. And whatever heaven has to offer, you have access to. And I call you into the body of Christ. And I welcome you with open arms unconditionally. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Now let's complete our
our worship. The giving of self. What am I saying? Your finances represent a part of your being, your giving, your strength because you worked for it. Whether it's a business or it's a career or however God has provided resources to you. When you release your offering, your seed, hallelujah, and you plant it in the ground, there is a harvest that comes forth. And when it comes forth, hallelujah, it comes forth in abundance. In an apple seed, when you when this an apple seed is planted, hallelujah, although it's a seed, you don't see the full potential. But when it's planted in the ground, it grows up into an apple tree. That's called abundance. And so not only do you have, hallelujah, the manifestation and abundance of apples on the apple tree, but God has also equipped the apple with more seeds so that you can continue to sow and reap the harvest. This is the opportunity for you to give. And when you give, give because you love God and because you trust God. Give because you honor God. Galatians say, if you received the word, if you were taught the word, if the word was imparted into you and strengthened you, hallelujah, it should be easy for you to give. And as you, as you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So, Father, I thank you for every seed that's sown. I thank you that all those who are sowing seeds are sowing with the intention of, re of reaping a harvest. Come on, get into your mind what you believe in God for, what you're expecting God to do. And so, in Jesus' name, I bless every seed that is being sown right now. And I release my faith for it to come to pass and manifest seven times greater in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you so very much. We don't take you for granted. We appreciate you joining our service. And we miss, we miss our family. We miss gathering together. Hallelujah. However, we understand because of the teaching in this church that we're still unified and assembled as a body. And so we appreciate you. We appreciate all the offerings. We appreciate the testimonies that come in. We, we appreciate that because that continues to give us the fire and the drive and the passion to do what it is we do. And no matter what, we won't stop. Because we know what God has called us to. And so, we'll be here. And we believe God for you to continue to be here. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gathering of the champions. We thank you for the, my brothers and my sisters, the kingdom citizens, your sons and your daughters that have gathered together in this service. We thank you for the blessing of their very presence. And we thank you, Lord, that the word that has gone forth is a prophetic word and a word of knowledge that has come forth with divine instruction and understanding and, and clarity for exhortation, edification, and comfort for your people. And we thank you that they've received it with gladness. And I release your angels right now and give them charge over your people to keep them in all their ways to protect them from hurt, harm, and danger. And because we're hidden in the secret place of the Most High Father, we declare that no danger will come nigh us. No plague will come nigh your people. In Jesus' name. And we declare this week, hallelujah, a week of acceleration unto our callings and our giftings, a week of acceleration 
and to the manifestation of promotion, of restoration, hallelujah, a week of restoration and healing, hallelujah, a week of, of financial abundance and overflow, hallelujah, taking place in their lives in Jesus' name. And we thank you for the testimonies that are coming forth because it's already done in Jesus' name. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his glorious presence with glory, majesty, dominion, and power now henceforth and forever. Come on, worship God and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't forget to tune in on Thursday and join us for our Thursday service, Carriers of the Kingdom. As we get intimate with you and share the word of God and teaching you and to continue to train and equip you to live as kingdom citizens on this earth and to glorify God. Amen. We bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. We love you so very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kingdom Nation. Thank you. Praise God.